Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I want to show you how you can add a lot more contrast to the final images that you produce by a technique I like to call dodging and burning with color in Photoshop. Okay, so before we jump in, I do want to say now a lot of photographers do use this technique, but I haven't really seen anyone using it as a way that you can technically dodge and burn. Now, before we jump into my computer screen, which we're gonna do in just a second, to anybody out there who's about to comment, well, dodging and burning or, or doing what you're about to do in color isn't necessarily the exact definition of dodging and burning. I know that, I, I totally get that, and that's fine. You can use dodging and burning if you want. This way that I'm about to show you comes after that fact, and it's a way that you can add like dreamy atmospheric looks to the foliage of your images or any solid predominant colors to your photographs that are mainly in the background just to add that little extra boost of depth. So jumping into my computer screen, I, I just have this really cool forest scene here that we can use to use this technique because what we have is a lot of cool contrast with lights, highlights over here on this rock face, and then you have this canopy that's reflecting a lot of the light that was coming in through the diffused light of a cloudy sky, and it showed up a lot of those vibrant spring greens here. And I love this photograph, one of my favorites that I took on this day. Obviously, we can clean this up a bit here, maybe increase the contrast some, boost the exposure just a little bit, and then with the highlights and shadows, we can increase that contrast more by boosting those a little bit. Obviously, with the whites and blacks, we can do the same thing and just add some clarity here and there to make this image pop too. A lot of people like to use the curves adjustment layer, and I like that too because it's an easy way that you can just say, okay, well, I can increase the highlights here just a little bit, and you don't wanna go crazy with this and then decrease that shadows just a little bit and make a very slight S-curve on that curves section in Lightroom. So we have a lot of this vibrant color coming in and we can increase that with the vibrance a little bit and the saturations too, making those greens pop. And already we have an edited image that we can just export right off the bat. And, and we can dodge and burn here by lightening and decreasing some shadows too. So let's say I did want to do some dodging and burning. I'm just gonna increase the exposure on a brush to like plus five and hit some of these areas that are a little bit lighter just with the adjustment brush. Come down here. That looks pretty good. It's a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna dial that back down to something like 0.3. And then I'm gonna hit new, and when new comes up, I'm going to decrease that about a half a stop and work on my shadows. So right next to the highlighted areas, I'm just gonna decrease my shadows a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Bump it back up to get it about where I want it. You know, I'm going for subtle changes here, nothing too crazy and drastic. So we've done a little bit of dodging and burning now. Now let's get to the color portion. So since we can't really do this in Lightroom, what I'm gonna do is export this to Photoshop and start editing it that way. So I'm gonna right click on this image, edit in and edit in Adobe Photoshop. Now, once this loads, I'm gonna show you how to use a very light opacity to paint color to dodge and burn some of these sections. And that phrase dodging and burning will become a little bit more apparent once you see what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna fit this to the screen and then I'm just going to go ahead and create a new layer since we don't wanna paint on this background layer. I'm gonna choose my brush tool and then I'm just gonna hover over this image and hold down my Alt or Option key. And for the highlighted areas to create more interesting color in those. I'm just gonna hover around these with my mouse click down until I find a bright image to lighten that up, but also get some color into that foliage here. I'm gonna select that, and then I'm gonna make sure my opacity that you see up here at the top of your screen is around 3%, because we don't wanna make crazy, 
paint strokes to this image and have that be very obvious to where we painted this in. Again, very subtle adjustments here. So I'm just gonna paint a 3% opacity just to these highlighted areas. And what that's gonna do is really make it kind of like this dreamy, atmospheric, almost like there was a fog or a haze in the sky. And then on these back foliage trees, I'm just gonna do another stroke to bump that up, you know, when you stack these, it becomes now doubled, so now it's 6%. So I can just click this eye icon on and off. So you can see just a little bit of pop, especially in the back foliage a little bit, where we've brightened that up just slightly and increased that exposure just a little bit, but also use some color there. So now doing the same thing, what I'm gonna do to decrease the exposure in my dodging and burning with color, I'm going to hold down my Alter Option key and I'm gonna hover over a darker green, something like that, and then I'm gonna paint into those areas and create a little bit more atmospheric look in the darker sections of these trees. And even maybe down here on this rock, I'll get a little bit, and down here in this shadow. And that just gives us a little bit more color in there. Again, I can turn this on and off and we just have that very subtle change, but I think it's a big change to what we have in this photograph and what it looks like when you do add a little splash of color that's very subtle and really creates a nice atmospheric look to brighten that up just slightly. Hey guys, if you want more tips like these that are gonna help you edit better photos, Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. We also go out into the field together where I show you how to shoot images like these when I'm on my adventures too.